Okay, guys, on page 368, it's referring to nature, which, as a lot of you recall from yesterday, that is what you were writing on. So if we go to 368, key ID details, number one, under what circumstance, according to Emerson, does mean egotism vanish? B, define... How would you define Emerson's idea of mean egotism? C. Analyze cause and effect. In nature, what emotion does Emerson believe replaces mean egotism? So let's find it. What is he talking about with mean egotism? Does anybody have an idea? Can the crickets turn in? When you think of egotism, what do you think of? Somebody who's got an ego is thinking only about, right? They're only thinking about themselves. What happens to that ego when they go out into nature? It goes away. Perfect. So that's your part one. When, it goes in, when you go into nature, mean egotism kind of fizzles away. So mean egotism, when we think of mean, good or bad? Bad. So not being very nice. Egotism, let's go back to the word egotism. What does that word mean? Garrett said it earlier. Can anybody tell me what egotism means? Now, I want you guys to interact with me. This is, this is a little bit different than how Mr. McGee does it. When I ask you guys questions, I want you to not just, like, blink at me. <laughs> what does egotism mean? I know you guys know what it means. Self-centered. Self-centered. So when you're being mean and egotistical, you're being what? Petty and thinking about yourself. And let's, I'll give you guys a big word for when you only think about yourself. Narcissism. Anybody ever hear of? So we, we've heard, so let's think of petty, mean, narcissism, mean egotism. And moving on to part C. In nature, what emotion does Emerson believe replaces mean egotism? So when he goes out into nature, instead of thinking of himself, what happens when he went out, when he went out into nature? Yeah, exactly. It's not all about him. He is just a tiny little part of something bigger. Um, so the mean egotism is replaced with happiness. He was happy when he went out into nature, right? He kind of had a spiritual awakening, correct? All right, part two. When does Emerson become a transparent eyeball? Transparent eyeball. Transparent means what? You can see through it. And when you're an eyeball, what is that? What do you think that means? Really good. You're doing awesome. So you can see it from a different point of view. I like that. He gets rid of that self-centeredness when he goes out into nature. What are the characteristics of this experience? So once again, he feels connected to nature, and with Emerson, a big part of this connection to nature was a connection with God. So I'm not sure if any of you guys remember that from the previous lecture. He was an extremely spiritual man. And this, this was his way of connecting with, with that spiritualism with God. See, in what ways does this description reflect transcendentalist belief in an over soul? And Sam, you said this. Could you repeat it again for me? <clears throat> We're on part C of two. In what ways does this description reflect transcendentalist belief 
and an oversoul. An oversoul is just another word for God. Can you remember what you told me earlier? He, can, he feels connected to everything. He realizes that he's a smaller part of something bigger. Number three, where does the power to produce nature's delight come from? Where does the power to produce nature's delight come from? So when men are going down and chopping down all of these woods, is there a harmony? No. When men live in the city outside of nature, are they in harmony? Not really. So, when he is talking about the transcendentalist movement, where do you find harmony and delight? In nature, in the woods. Okay, part B. In describing a harmony between human beings and nature, do you think Emerson means the relationship is always serene? Explain. Is there always harmony between humans and nature? Is it always serene? Are we always a part of nature? Are, are we animals? Do we come from nature? But is it always serene? Okay. Next part, go ahead and title this part 370. What terms does Emerson use to describe society? And by the way, we are talking about self-reliance now. If you guys have your annotations out from nature and self-reliance and Concord, him, it might help you with these questions. So what terms does Emerson use to describe society? Does anybody remember from self-reliance? The book uses the example that he describes it as a joint stock company. Now, does anybody have any idea what that means? Joint stock company. When you think of stock, what do you guys think of? Stock market. Okay, so an investment, right? What do you think a joint investment means? Together, right. Good job, Paige. So a joint investment stock company is everybody's invested in this thing, right? All of us have to be a part of it, correct? So B, interpret. According to Emerson, what is society's main purpose? So we have the individual and we have society. What's the difference between the two? Is the society one person? It's a large yeah, it's a large group of people. So what is what is society's main purpose? According to Emerson and self reliance. <coughs> if society is a group of people an individual is one, does a society, does it su support individualism all the time? What, <coughs> it wants you to support the group, think of the group, correct? It's a conspiracy against man. Good job, very impressive, you found it. Okay, in what ways 
does Emerson believe people should be affected by the other ways, the way that others perceive them? Should we care, according to Emerson, about what other people think? No. That's what individualism is. Number two, according to Emerson, what role does the divine have in determining each person's circumstance? The divine being what? When he's talking about the divine, what's he talking about? God. God. So according to Emerson, what role does God have in determining each person's circumstances? Does God have everything to do with it? Does he set something out and then we are supposed to live up to that? Yeah. Like I said, Emerson was a very spiritual man. He referred to the oversoul, so he kind of flips back and forth between these terms of the divine, oversoul, and God. What would Emerson say is each person's reason for living and explain? So if we go back to part one, our purpose in life is set by who? <coughs> God, right? Okay. So, if our purpose is set by God, what are we supposed to achieve in life? <coughs> yeah. Live, make, perhaps would be, uh, according to Emerson, if we were living up to the path that God set for us, the expectations of God, would we be more content? Would we be happier? Right. Okay, number three. How important is Emerson's use of the adjective foolish in his discussion of consistency? So when he's talking about Foolish thought was the opposite of being foolish. Clever. Anybody else give me some synonyms here? Clever. I'm sorry? Well, to clever. Some other words that are like clever. Wise. Wise. Smart. What is the importance of when he uses foolish? So he says foolish because he wants you to be clever. He wants you to be smart, right? Okay. B. Do you think there are any circumstances in which Emerson would advocate the benefits of consistency? Do you think it's important to be consistent in your relationships and your friendships? To be dependable? You don't think you should yes. be consistent? It is important. It is important to be consistent. Inconsistent foolishness. That's something that Emerson's talking about. So in relationships with family, with friends, with people that you associate with, it's important to be consistent. Is it important to be, something that Emerson brings up, is it important to be consistent in scholarship, in studying? Yes. Number four, which passage in these essays best expresses belief in the importance of the individual, 
Explain the reasons for your choice. In your response, use at least two of these essential question words. Conformity, integrity, and society. So which one talks about the importance of the individual? Self-reliance. Self and then give a couple of reasons why you guys think it would be self-reliance. If you guys have a differing opinion, then write down nature and two reasons why you think nature would be the one that encourages independence. Next section, title this 371, 1 through 4. Going back to Concord hymns, this is going to be a little bit fresher in your brain, so we might be able to move a little bit through this one. What event took place by the Rude Bridge? What happened at the bridge? Who shot who? Okay, part B. What does the poet mean by the image of the shot heard around the world? You guys, if you have your notes out right in front of you, it should be right there. What was the importance of that? Did they know how important it was at the time? Two, what has happened to the bridge since the battle that took <clears throat> place there? Do you think that bridge is still standing after all of the battles? How does the poem's organization reflect a sense of the passage of time? Is this <coughs> poem being written in the tense of it's happening right now? Is it written in the present tense? Past tense. Past tense. Why do you think that's significant? It's already happened. What is it past tense because we're reflecting on the importance of this moment in time? In the last stanza, whom does the poet address directly? In the last stanza, who is he talking to? He says, does he say you? Or does he give a name? Who is he directly the talking fallen. to? The first word in that stanza is spirit. spirit. B. In what way does this direct address reflect the transcendentalist belief in an oversoul? How does this poem connect to an oversoul? <coughs> Kind of talked about it earlier. The oversoul God sets out a plan for each one of us, right? According to this, supports individualism. Do you think because of these men's individualism that they broke away from? Were these nonconformists?
Were they individuals? I don't know. It was like, I'm sure some people felt like they had to, so that somebody else was doing it. Mm -hmm. Why were they fighting in this war? Let's do a little bit of history here. Why, why were we fighting this war? Who were we fighting against? Why? Because they were We wanted independence, right? So it was independence, freedom, <coughs> Number four, which aspects of Concord Hymn would be appropriate for the dedication of other war monuments? So why would this be appropriate for other war monuments, do you think? Why would this be appropriate for the warm What was important about how these men died, why they died? Who did they die for? They died for us, right? They died for freedom. Moving on to 372. <clears throat> Number one <clears throat> says identify one metaphor in each essay. And just to refresh your memory on what a metaphor is, it's a stated similarity between two or more unlike things that does not use the words like or as. Example, society is a joint stock company. That is a metaphor. So, I want you guys to identify a metaphor in each one. I just gave you one for self-reliance. metaphor in nature, they compare nature to something. Use something to describe what nature is. Nature is a Nature starts on page 367. Has anybody found one for nature yet? Which one did you guys find? First morning place. Nature's morning place. Nature is not always tricked in holiday attire. That's another one we can use. <clears throat> For B, explain the abstract idea each metaphor helps Emerson express in concrete terms. So, what, does, what do those metaphors mean in nature? What do you think it means? Nature isn't always trekked out in holiday attire. Nature is a morning place. It 
is nature always serene and happy? Does it always make you feel better when you go out in nature? Sometimes it does, sometimes not so much. Number two, explain Emerson's use of synodo sin in this passage. Trust thyself, every heart vibrates to that iron string. How does this use of synodo help to clarify Emerson's point about belief in oneself? And that is defined as the use of a part of something to stand for the whole. Example, the shot heard around the world. The shot stands for the whole of the Revolutionary War and the spread of the American revolutionary ideas. So trust thyself, every heart vibrates to that iron string. So what does heart represent? What does heart represent? Every heart, so he's talking about every person. So heart represents person. Okay. And in B, how does this use help to clarify Emerson's point about the belief in oneself? So every person in their heart, what? Every heart vibrates to that iron string. What does he mean by vibrates to that iron string? When your heart vibrates, it's doing what? What? What makes a string on a guitar vibrate? Do you do that to yourself if you're the guitar? Somebody has to do it, right? Somebody has to make that call. So everybody is responding to the call. Your heart vibrates. You are responding to the call. Three, does the image of the transparent eyeball effectively convey the transcendentalist idea of the universe over soul? Explain. Transparent eyeball. What did we say transparent eyeball means? This is from earlier. Transparent is? So a transparent eyeball is one that can see everything around it all the time, right? Does this go with the transcendentalist theme of an oversoul? Yes, it does. An omnipresent being. Four. In nature, Emerson describes the woods as the plantations of God. What type of figurative language is he using? Plantation is what? Just a field? What kind of a farm is a plantation? Huge. These were massive, 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 giant farms. So when nature is referred to God's plantation, what does that mean? Write that down, what you think that means. <coughs> Who plants?
against this farm, if it's God's, who created this giant farm, this giant plantation of earth? God did. Five. In self-reliance, Emerson describes that divine idea which each of us represents. What do that phrase and the one noted in question four represent similar ideas about the relationship of God and nature and people, boys? Number five. What are they saying about God and nature and people with that line? Sam? That like when you go out to nature, you get closer to God. Okay. Right? Who who decides everything about our lives and what paths our lives are supposed to be? God. Is it up to you to live up to that? Yes. According to nature and self reliance. Six, Concord Hymn commemorates events that happened more than 60 years before the poem was written. A, note one example, each of imagery, metaphor, and synagogue in the poem. So A has three parts. So an example of imagery would be what? Bridge. Bridge? Read it to me, please. The bridge that arched the flood. That is a good one. The bridge that arched the flood. Or um, a metaphor, down the dark stream which seaward creeps. And then for Synodoph, the conqueror silent sleeps. Seven? I'm sorry? What was this in the book? It was the conqueror, silent sleeps, or shot, heard around the world. Number seven, restate the meaning of this sentence. In the woods, too, a man casts off his ears as the snake his sloop. He casts off his years. What do you think that means? <coughs> when you go into nature, you let go of what? Let go of everything. You let go of your stress. You let go of your worries. Like what? Snake loses his old skin. For eight. Oh, for B. How does the repeated S sound in the phrase snake his slew add to the meaning? What makes a lot of S sounds like snake? So is he emphasizing the meaning, the connection with the snake by using that sound? Okay, for eight, use the chart like the one shown to compare and contrast descriptions of the bonds between people and society 
and those between people and nature. Which bonds would Emerson say are more important? Explain. So you need to do a little chart here. One is going to be nature, one's going to be self-reliance. Excuse this interruption. We have some folks here working on the fire alarm and they think they have it disabled to test it. However, if the fire alarm would happen to go off, just ignore it, continue doing what you're doing. Again, if the fire alarm goes off here in the next few minutes, just stay in class and do what you're doing. There is no fire. Thank you. Okay. So under nature, what are we going to put? What happens when you go into nature? You just told me. You go into nature and you what? You let go of everything, right? So what about social ties? Does M so we're talking about self-reliance here. Is he encouraging social ties or is he encouraging you to be more of an individual? The book suggests that Emerson suggests that the social ties are largely expedients for material survival, whereas our relationship to nature binds us to the spiritual foundation of life. Material survival means what? Right? Surviving in society, you need to be able to make some sort of living, contribute to society, support yourself, correct? Your connection with nature is your connection with God, the Oversoul. Emerson seems to think that our bonds to nature transcend personal relationships. Transcend meaning what? When you transcend something, you go above. So for number nine, this has an A, B, C, and D. By answering the question below about this statement from self-reliance, nature always wears the colors of the spirit. Part A. What evidence does Emerson provide to support this statement? Nature always wears the colors of the spirit. So nature represents what? Feelings, different feelings. Does, is nature always pleasant and serene, or can it be violent and angry? It can be. So nature represents the many different types of emotions, feelings, like Cheeto said, that we can experience. B, <coughs> is this evidence convincing? Explain. Is it convincing? I'll leave this up to you guys. You write your own response to this. So C, what argument can you make against this statement? Nature always wears the colors of the spirit. finish up part D and then we can move on. So does nature reflect your emotions? I don't know how long that, that wasn't supposed to go off. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Will nature reflect your mood when you're out in it? Are you going to find things in nature that reflect how you feel? Possibly. C. 
So D, some people find their own needs reflected in nature. Okay. Okay, guys, so uh, there's a...